This video is about narcolepsy. This is the section we're going to be studying, part of the behavior section of USMLE, where we study about the sleep cycles, and this is a disorder of the sleep cycle. So that's where it's going to be uh, included. Now let's define narcolepsy. Now narcolepsy is a chronic neurological disorder caused by brain's inability to regulate sleep weight cycles normally. Does this mean that they don't get any sleep? Of course they do. They just get regularly, uh, really irregular kind of sleep, not very good quality sleep. They do get sleep. They tend to sleep all the time. You'll see them doing something and falling asleep right there. So they do get sleep. It's just that their sleep sleep pattern is not good so they're not well rested. This is the reason they're often confused with insomniacs. Why? Because they have this disturbed nocturnal sleep. What's nocturnal sleep? Sleep during nighttime. So they have a disturbed nocturnal sleep so they sleep let's say 10 hours at night yet they get up they start working and they're sleepy again. So even though they have this nocturnal sleep it is disturbed. As a result, when they're doing about their, uh, they're going about their day during the daytime, they still feel sleepy. As a result, there is abnormal daytime sleep patterns, which gives them the impression that, oh, this person must not have slept all night. But if you ask them, did you sleep last night? They're like, yeah, 10 hours or however many hours they slept. So they sleep, but it's not good quality sleep. That's why they're often confused with insomniacs. Now, what are insomniacs? Insomniacs are people who have inability to sleep for a long period of time or inability to, be, to fall asleep, uh, to be able to fall asleep to sleep. Uh, those are the people who are insomniacs. Nocturnal people have no problem falling asleep. The problem is that they don't get quality sleep. Now, narcolepsy is a lot more interesting than what I have just mentioned. It's just not about abnormal nocturnal sleep, or it's not just about um, irregular or abnormal daytime sleepiness. There is more to the story, okay? And one of the very important factors of narcolepsy is that it is associated with something called cataplexy. What exactly is cataplexy? Cataplexy is a condition which is a sudden loss of muscle function and the, the loss of muscle function can be very mild to very severe but this is a sudden loss of muscle function. Now this is where it gets a little interesting. Sometimes cataplexy can be so mild, it can come in the question so vague that you might even miss it because the patient might say, oh, I'm tired all night and I feel weakness in my neck. So you might not associate a, a little weakness in the neck area as cataplexy, but really cataplexy can be so mild that it can, it can present as weakness of a small muscle such as neck muscles okay or I feel weak in the knees uh, those kind of things so those are very mild you can also see sagging of the facial muscles okay um, you can confuse that with Bell's palsy but keep in mind that if it's associated with sleep it might be cataplexy or it can be very dramatic which is out there that they just they just crash on the floor suddenly unannounced you know, and it happens often. So those are some of the clues of cataplexy. Now this is a funny, funny problem, this cataplexy business. Because I remember seeing a YouTube video of someone who, who is a narcoleptic associated with cataplexy. And this person would be laughing one minute, the very next second they're falling asleep. So if you're interested, please look it up. It's hilarious. If I can find the video, I will post it in the description below and you can, you know, have a little bit of fun while studying your simile. So this cataplexy can be triggered 
by emotions so it can be something very happy emotion it can be a very sad emotion and cataplexy is precipitated by strong emotions now let's talk about diagnosis according to the international classification of sleep disorders narcolepsy is the minimal criteria for diagnosis of narcolepsy is daytime naps or lapses into sleep that occur almost daily for at least three months. So these are the numbers you have to remember that for at least three months you're going to have lapses into sleep, lapses in sleep and daytime naps and cataplexy. So this is the, the most basic criteria for diagnosing narcolepsy. But is this the only criteria? I mean, what if someone does not experience cataplexy? Can you still diagnose narcolepsy? Absolutely. Now, what is the criteria for that? Now, other than cataplexy, another association with uh, narcolepsy is sleep paralysis. Now, what exactly is sleep paralysis? Sleep paralysis is, let's say you're waking up, but you cannot move or you cannot get up you're kind of stuck in the body and you feel paralyzed so you're you're waking up from your sleep but sometimes a lot of people panic because of sleep paralysis because they feel like they're up but they cannot get up because they feel paralyzed so that's sleep paralysis so that's another association with uh, narcolepsy these people also experience hypnogogic or hypnopompic um, hallucinations so what are those two hallucinations mean hypnagogic hallucinations mean that you see very vivid dreams while falling asleep this is more cop common than hypnopompic hypnopompic is that you see very visual um, hallucinations wh while you are waking up so hypnagogic is while falling asleep, hypnopompic is while waking up. Hypnagogic is a lot more common than hypnopompic, but hypnopompic hallucinations also can happen with narcoleptics. Narcoleptics also experience something called automatic behaviors. Okay, what, it, what does automatic behaviors mean? It means that a person continue to function. Let's say they're talking or putting things away, etc and they're really sleeping and during those sleep episodes they they have no memory of performing such function but they have done it okay they've done those things but they have no memory of it so those are automatic behaviors so let's kind of quickly summarize so what are the associations we see other than abnormal sleep wake cycles and and abnormal daytime and sleepiness we also see that they experience cataplexy but we can diagnose uh, narcoleptics even if they don't experience cataplexy if they say they have sleep paralysis they have hypnagogic or hypnopompic hallucinations and they experience automatic behaviors another thing that is also important is REM sleep when do they experience REM sleep and for that to be able to determine when they do it we have to do a, a sleep study and if we see that they get into REM sleep within five minutes of falling asleep, then that is also a major criteria for experiencing narcolepsy, uh, narcolepsy because usually it's not normal to experience REM sleep so early on in the sleep. Usually people sleep for an hour and then go into REM sleep, right? What is REM sleep? Rapid eye movement. That's when you have very vivid uh, dreams uh, you have um, your sleep waves are it's all it looks like you're almost like you it, it, uh, it almost looks like beta waves when you're up and moving and thinking and so it's very your brain is very active during REM sleep and because they they get into REM sleep so quickly that's why um, they don't get deep sleep because REM sleep is not really deep sleep you're dreaming and it's very active and you don't feel as rested as you should like everyone else who's getting that uh, deep sleep that this person is not getting. So to summarize, the most important thing to remember about 
Narcolepsy is the tetrad of narcolepsy. This is the classic symptoms of this disorder. You have to have to remember this. And those are cataplexy, sleep paralysis, hypnagogic hallucinations, and excessive daytime sleepiness. Other symptoms include automatic behaviors, and these symptoms may occur in may not occur in all patients, but these four very, very common among narcoleps narcoleptics. So let me ask you some questions. How do you define narcolepsy? It's a chronic neurological disorder caused by brain's inability to regulate sleep weight cycles normally. Why are narcoleptics often uh, confused with insomniacs? Because people with narcolepsy often experience disturbed nocturnal sleep and an abnormal daytime sleep patterns, which often are confused with insomniacs because they kind of look the same. What stage of sleep disorder, what stage of sleep does narcoleptics experience most often? Well, narcoleptics, when falling asleep, generally experience the REM sleep, REM stage of sleep, within five minutes. While most people do not experience REM sleep until an hour or later, right? So they experience REM, REM sleep really early on and for a longer amount of time. Now, true or false? Narcolepsy is a neurological disorder. It's true, because you can say narcolepsy is a chemical disorder. That's not true, right? It's a neurological disorder. Uh, here's an interesting one. Is narcolepsy caused by a mental or psychological illness? No, it's not. It has no association with any other disease. None so ever. It is independent not associated with any other disease. Now here's a question I have not talked about. Is narcolepsy associated with any genetic problem? So is it, what I'm asking is, is it, is it something that you inherit through genetics? Yes, there is genetic association with narcolepsy. Um, we don't have to go into details, but we just have to know that it is genetically uh, passed on from our uh, parents. Now what about other environmental triggers such as a virus? Is narcolepsy uh, associated with uh, a viral infection during early development, during brain development? Yes, it is. I know I haven't, I haven't talked about it because it's just little things I just wanted to add at the very end of this video. What else? Okay, so if I said that sleep paralysis is triggered by sudden emotional reactions such as laughter, anger, surprise, or fear and may last for a few seconds or several minutes and the person maintains unconsciousness throughout this episode. Would you say it's true or false? It's false because what I described was part of cataplexy, right? Uh, sudden emotional reactions Sudden uh, paralysis triggered by emotional reactions such as laughter, anger, surprise, or fear, those are part of cataplexy and not sleep paralysis. Because sleep paralysis is when you are waking up as you're asleep. It's very different. By the way, cataplexy, during cataplexy, these patients are always conscious. They never lose consciousness. Um, sometimes cataplexy can experience, can resemble sorry not experience they can resemble like epileptic seizures but they're not really going through seizures they just look like it so now that we completely exhausted narcolepsy let's look at an example so in this example it says that a 22 year old woman who is a university student comes to the physician for a routine exam she says that she sometimes experiences very vivid and detailed visual images in the room about her as she wakes up in the morning. So it's as she's waking up, she's seeing very detailed visual images. She, she has learned to recognize that what she's seeing is not real because some details will be inappropriate, such as summer clothes on the chair when she knows it is December. Okay, so what is what's happening? She's hallucinating. That's why it's so inappropriate. I mean, it's odd things that she's seeing because she's hallucinating. And what kind of hallucination is she going through? Is it hypnagogic or hypnopompic? 
it's hypnopompic because hypno hypnagogic hallucination is while falling asleep but she is waking up so this is hypnopompic hallucinations now let's continue so narcolepsy should already be in your differential diagnosis on top of the list because I mean hypnopompic that is like a big red button waiting to be pushed like it's so obvious now but let's see she reports no difficulties going to sleep uh, although she says she feels tired during the day so this is what she you know this is part of the part of the diagnostic criteria they're gonna feel excessive daytime sleepiness but there is not gonna be any problem while falling asleep because that's a problem for insomnia it's not narcolepsy so that pretty much kind of establishes that yes you know um, this is narcolepsy what I was thinking before it is established by two more uh, diagnostic criteria which tells me that this is narcolepsy now more detailed exam of this patient is likely to reveal which of the following additional symptoms now before we even read the options we should be able to recall the tetrads of narcolepsy and what are they they are cataplexy hallucinations hypnagogic or hematopompic sleep paralysis and something else excessive daytime sleepiness so she already talked about hypnagogic hallucinations she talked about excessive uh, daytime sleepiness now we could very well see cataplexy in the options we could see sleep paralysis or we can even see automatic behaviors uh, but they don't occur in all patients but we could see that so these are the three uh, different options that we can see or they can even describe cataplexy or sleep paralysis or automatic behaviors we should be able to pick that up so let's see so a inability to move after waking up, bam, that is what? That is sleep paralysis. That's my answer. But let's read the op other options anyways because we want to pick the best answer even though that pretty much says it is the best answer. But let's say, let's see uh, other options. B, loud snoring while sleeping. Loud, slo loud snoring while sleeping that is associated with sleep apnea, not related to this question. Sensations moving up and down her legs while going to sleep. It's not sensations, it's hallucinations that happens while going to sleep. So that's not the answer. Sleepwalking. Sleepwalking has no association with uh, narcolepsy. So I'll rule that out also. Teeth grinding while sleeping. Again, not associated with narcolepsy. So in this, ans in this question, it's loud and clear that it's option A, inability to move after waking up.